Hey, what's going on, y'all? It is K-I-M normally in either Atlanta or Savannah, but today I am in Orlando, Florida at the 2021 I Believe event with David Imonitier and other Believe Nation citizens. And I thought I would come on right quick. I have not spoken to you guys since the event started. And so um, I'm getting ready for day one, two, three of the event. And um, I wanted to take my hair out for this day. Candy is downstairs. She's probably going to kill me if I'm late. Um, but I really want my hair out. Hey, what's going on, Dr. Goody? What is going on with you, Superstar? Thank you for all of the um, information that you share with us. What's going on, Core Global uh, Financial? I appreciate your testimonial the other day. We just had Instagram join us. So, guys, listen, let me tell you um, right quick. Um, yesterday, at this event, which, by the way, this is not... Uh, any specific company there are people here from many different companies there are just people here who really want to build their belief um to do a number of different things some people are in are in mlm some people are in insurance other people are in you name it stocks forex doesn't matter um but believe nation is for anyone who wants to go to the next level in whatever they are doing and um it always just trips me out that people in home-based businesses don't take their businesses seriously enough to ever go to any event, many of them, because people in other industries, doctors, real estate professionals, you name it, they know that there's going to be in a, you know, a conference or some type of license that they need to stay up to par, not only in their knowledge, but just if they're serious about their profession, there are going to be certain things that they need to do to stay close to the fire, right? You only stay warm if you're close to the fire. So all other professions that industries know that they have to go to the conferences the seminars the whatever pertaining to the industry but many people who claim to want financial freedom on like some unbelievable levels i'm not gonna say they don't know it they don't seem to care hey what's going on veronica and i'm going to go ahead and give my disclaimer right now i y k y k if you know you know meaning if you're on your stuff and you're doing your personal development, you know whether I'm talking to you or not. Um, half the time, if it hits a nerve, then chances are, like my grandmother says, a hit dog will holler. So if it hits a nerve with you, then probably it was meant for you. <laughs> um, but yeah, it just it trips me out how many people do not do that. So like I said, if you ever see me talk about Believe Nation, this is not tied to my company. It is not tied to anyone's company. It is just for people who want to believe bigger and better, faster. All right. Now, one thing I'll say about this conference is I'm so surprised. Candy and I both are surprised at how many young people are here. And it's awesome to see because young people are real. They're going to change the face of the future. They are really going to do things differently than all of us. They are fed up. They are. They have watched now not only their grandparents, but their parents, and even many of them, their older siblings, live lives of unfulfillment, and they ain't having it. These young kids are coming out, and they are, I mean, like, I wish y'all could see how many 20, 18 to 22-year-olds there are. It's just me and Candy are the old people in the group. <laughs> we the old heads. We the old folks. Um, so that's a really great thing. Speaking of young people, all right, Candy and I had a conversation with a gentleman yesterday and y'all, it brought me to tears. Okay. We are, we bought the VIP tickets. All right. And so yesterday we had a VIP luncheon and a Q and A with Mr. David E. Bonitier. Well, um, they rented out this restaurant for us. The meal was so good. Oh my gosh. They rented out this restaurant for us. And um, it was just like, you know, everybody sit together. So Candy and I are trying to find this table. And we see this one young man while everybody, like everybody had just gotten into the restaurant. Nobody had food yet, pretty much. But this one young, young man is sitting at a table for four people. He's sitting there by himself and he already has a plate and he's woofing it down. I mean, homie is going to town. So Candy and I are like, yeah, let's sit with him. So, um... We go and sit by him, and he's like, you know, we were like, are these seats taken? He's like, no, help yourself. So we sat down, and um, Candy and I are never ones 
to like, if we sit with you, we sit with you. We're going to converse with you. We're going to talk to you. We're going to get to know you. We, we never want to make anybody feel like the odd man out. So, um, you know, we're not going to sit with this young man and then just talk to each other. So we started engaging with him. You know, what's your name? He told us, um, where are you from? He came all the way from California to Florida. And we're looking because he's, he's a, 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 a smaller stature young man. So I was just immediately like, how old are you? <laughs> and he was like, how old do you think? But he was like 22. But y'all, he looked like a kid. He looked like he was, I I say he could pass for 15 even. And so he was like, I get that all the time. And, and I hate that. I said, well, in a few years, you're going to love that. That's a great quality to have to look younger than than how, how than what you really are. And so we start talking to him like, are you in Mr. Emonitier's company? And he said he joined a week ago. That's the first gem. Get that. He joined a week ago. Guys, I know people who have been in companies for years months and they've never been to their company um uh um system their company webinar seminar whatever so even though this is not a company specific event mr Emonitia is in a company and many of his people are here but there are many people who are not in his company that are here okay so he asked if we were in the company and we we're like no we're in another company okay cool boom so then we're like okay so you joined a week ago and you're already here and he was like yeah my, my sponsor told me to come so <sighs> Some just told me to come to listen to him because he has the results. He has the results that I want. Yeah, and so Candy and I are looking at this young man like, good for you. That's super smart. Now, he cracked us up. He cracked us up because he was like, man, this is my first time on a plane. I've never been to Florida. And he was he was like, I've never been to a... Y'all. He just really touched our hearts. He was like, I've never been to a restaurant like this. He was looking around. He was like, look, this is, me. you know, that pretty, mo uh, pretty woman moment. He had one of those. He was like, this restaurant is beautiful. These people are wonderful. Look, everybody getting money. He was like, this food is delicious. He was like, I've never eaten so good. And, and we were like, speaking of that, how did you get your food? And he was like, man, I, I, I was dipping and doing and, and I saw them put the food out and I just went and got the food right then and there and blah, 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 blah. And we were like, okay, you know what you're doing. All right. Um, but when we started sp speaking to him, it was certain things that he said, and I can't remember the order, but basically he was just saying, you know, I'm stepping out on faith. My sponsor told me to come out here. I came. I didn't really have the money for the plane ticket. This is my first time on a plane. He said this is his first time on his plane on the plane. And, and it really was because he was like, I missed my plane. We were like, we missed our plane too. And he was like, well, yeah, but I missed my plane because um, he said, I think he said his plane took off at 7.55 and he got there at 7.50. He said, I thought it was like an Uber. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hold on. Let me tell Candy. Um. She's going to kill me. I, I sent her a message that said, please text me. Watch. She's going to be like, I see you on Facebook Live. You should be downstairs. She's going to kill me. But um, I'm going to finish this this message right quick. Um, He was like, I thought I thought the plane was like an Uber. We were like, oh, no, baby. A plane, you got to be there well in advance. And he was like, well, I see that now. And that was so funny. That was like, like a cute little moment. But as we spoke, started speaking to him, he was just like, you know, I don't have nobody. And when he said, I don't have nobody, it was something in how he said that. Y'all know I used to work with kids. So, oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta go. Um, Candy got me though. Oh, it helps to have a friend, y'all. So he was like, um, I got nobody. And, um, and he didn't say it in an angry way. He was just saying it in a very matter of fact way. And so we were like, you know, and I was like, well, where's your family? And uh, he said, oh, I'm a foster kid. So I'm just I'm just doing the math on all of this. Now, when I was a younger child, around 12 or 13, my mom actually had me go to, um, me and my sister and brother, we went to a camp that was at an orphanage. Um, I, I've spoken about this before. My mom had us in, one year we went to a basketball camp. One, every year we would go to kind of sort of like a different camp. And one year I remember we went to St. Mary's on Victory Drive. It's no longer there. But it was an orphanage. And so it was a, a very interesting summer because here regular kids are assimilating with system kids. And at the end of the day, we get to go home. 
but they don't. And those, I learned so much. I'm so thankful to my mom for that experience because I learned so much from those kids. It made me appreciate my mom so much more. It made me appreciate having a home. Um, sometimes you would go there and the, and the same kids would be there and sometimes the kids would be gone. And, and one thing I definitely hate, I definitely hate, I want to start something for sure where foster kids have actual luggage. I don't like the practice of having them leave foster care with their stuff in a trash bag. I hate that visual. I hate that that I just I just think that's very very cruel. So um just speaking to the kids, different kids about how they ended up there, what all do they know about their parents or, or remember about their parents and looking at the difference between the younger foster kids versus the older foster kids that were about to uh what do you call it? I don't want to say phase out, but basically graduate and go into the world on their own. No, per, no, because, you know, when you're a child of the system, you're in the system only until 18. But then it's just. What? It's whatever you can make of yourself. And so speak, sitting there when that young man said um, that he was a foster child. Hey, what's going on, coach? When he said he was a, for, a, a kid of the system. You know, and, the, and he had nobody. I immediately thought of all of those kids at St. Mary's. And um, my heart just went out to him. But y'all, he had so much joy. He had so much hope. He had so much light in his eyes. He was like, I got to do this. I got to do this, man. This is so inspiring. And he just kept saying, I never had food this good. I never ate in a place this good. I can't believe I'm out here. And, and, and what was so wonderful, because I'm like, hmm, he's a foster kid at the VIP event? Because the VIP tickets... They are not the cheapest tickets, okay? So what happened, how he ended up at the dinner was because he took the first step, because he got on a plane, his sponsor, once he got to the event, his because he had the cheapest tickets, right? But once he got there, his sponsor took his gold seating um, lanyard and gave him a VIP ticket. He upgraded him. And so I said, oh my gosh, see, that is a real sponsor. Now his sponsor, I want you to pay attention because there's so many lessons in the story. His sponsor didn't say, hey, you need to be at this event and I'm going to buy your ticket and I'm going to buy you because some of y'all are sponsoring people in your business because they say they really want to do it. So you're like, oh, I'll buy your package. Don't do that, guys. Make a person take the first step. And if you want to upgrade them later or help them out with the next steps, that's fine. But make a person take the first step to really see if they want what it is they say they want, right? But then once they do it, position yourself so you can be a blessing to them. I know I definitely try to help out my team. Um, certain people, when I see them really doing things out of their comfort zone, I might send them a free product or do certain things. You know, Candy is here with me on this trip She's the only person from my team who is here. And what's so crazy is, I didn't even know this, but Candy actually came across a free ticket just by her networking and talking to other people, and she offered it to other team members. Now, if you're on my team and you're watching this, don't get all offended thinking I'm talking about you specifically. But the fact that no one, no one took her up on the free ticket was mind-blowing to me. Because what we are getting here. And I really, you know, somebody said, bring me back the nuggets. I really contemplated whether or not to share my notes. Because honestly, not because I'm stingy, but just because this is not something that, you know, what is the point of me sharing your notes? A large part of this experience is the experience. It's the environment. It's the music. It's the lights. It's the people. It's the conversations. It's the everything. There is somebody from our company who is here. And baby, when I tell you I have never ever, ever, ever heard her tell her story or speak like she spoke yesterday. Woo! She, she, mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, mm. You got to get in the room, guys. You got to get in the rooms. You do not know what people are going through, but whatever you are going through, if you want to not stay stuck in that situation, you've got to get around other people who have made it through too. And can encourage you and can inspire you because I'm telling you, we are made to be in com communion, in community, in unity with each other. Things are so much better when they say together we are strong as a, we're stronger together. That's just not for sports, y'all. That's for life. I'm telling you, there were people on day one of this event. I, whoo, 
we did an exercise and it broke everybody down. And I turned around and I saw a black man who was no more than 20 years old. And y'all know men, especially black men, they don't be getting in touch with their emotions, baby. <laughs> but I saw this 20 year old black man behind me and he, he was just, his face, y'all, was covered in tears. He was just, mm, he was just too through. And I don't know what he's going through. Only he knows that. But, you know, the fact that we were all there together and, you know, that I was happy that he thought that that was a safe place for him to do that. And a lot of people found it to be a safe place because we all were crying. <laughs> we all were crying. So, I mean, these events are very, very impactful, very powerful um, that young man, we had a great conversation with him and I really believe he's going to do great things. Cause if you make a sacrifice, um, I don't know what he does for work, what he does for a living. We didn't get that far. He ate his food and then we looked and he was gone in a flash. Um, but I was very happy that we sat next to exactly who we sat next to. And we had that conversation again. It makes me appreciate my life. It makes me appreciate even at 42 years old right now, it makes me appreciate my mother. The sacrifices that she made for us, uh, the life that she gave us, she worked very hard as a single um, parent, very hard with three kids, but she never, ever, ever gave up. And I'm so proud of that young man. And I looked at, at like I said, I look at how many women, how many um, people, period, have opportunities every single day to get themselves, get a seat at the table and get in an environment that could really elevate their belief and help them in so many areas of their life and they simply won't take the first step like he did and look what happened once he took the first step his sponsor upgraded him there was better waiting for him than what he even originally thought um later on when, when the um session reconvened they had some people come on stage for a little like fun activity and he was up there so candy and i were rooting from him for the seat <laughs> We were like screaming his name. We were like, that's the guy. That's the guy that we sat with. But um, it was really inspiring to sit with him. And this whole entire event has been inspiring. Um, I have told you guys about, believe we got uh, a free book, Mr. Imonitier's latest book um, with our, in our swag bag. And I've told you guys about this before. And again, you know, so many of you have told me dreams and hopes and aspirations that you have. And then you'll say, but you know, you usually cite two things as the problem, problem, either time or money. Well, I can tell you for a fact it's not money because I have shared so many free resources with you guys that you haven't taken advantage of that that tells me money is not the issue. Believe Nation has an app that is free. And I can look in my back office and see how many people click my link and then how many people actually follow through and join. And y'all, let me tell you, the number, the difference in the number of people who have clicked the link versus the number of people who have actually joined, something that is free is mind-boggling to me. Why would, why would you actually go through the trouble? Apparently, you heard something that I said, that I shared with you, that inspired you to click the link. So why wouldn't you go through the, why, it's not even trouble. Why wouldn't you follow through? And just get the doggone free account and become a part of the number one platform for personal achievement. It blows my mind. But I can't, let me tell you something, I can't figure y'all out. I'll go crazy trying to. And I'm just not in the mood to go any more crazy than, I'm, than I already am. <laughs> I think my level of crazy is sufficient enough. But this event was definitely worth it. And Candy coming, this is a single mom with special needs twins, y'all. And she's the only person on my team here with me. And guess what? It's a pattern of behavior. She's usually the only person with me. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Just like that foster um, gentleman, the gentleman out of the foster system who had to make a lot of sacrifices to come here one week after joining his company. So that means two weeks ago, he knew nothing about this event catch that candy and not plan for this we bought our tickets in april he didn't do that he did everything at the last minute but candy and i had our own challenges right we're both here we both had to make arrangements for our children i have one son she has twins we both had to make arrangements for our children i had to drive up to a i had to drive up from savannah 
to Atlanta just to fly down to Orlando, Florida with my girl, right? She had to drive her children across to another state because that's where someone was who could watch them. Just for her to come back and drive back to Atlanta to catch a flight to Orlando. It was not easy. So when I say, you know, position yourself, position yourself to receive the blessing. David E. Monitier said something the other day. And he said, the blessing doesn't go away. It just goes to the person who's in place. And that hit me like a ton of bricks. Are you in place? Are you in position to receive blessings that are meant for you? If not, it won't go away. It'll just go to the next person. It will just go to the next person who's in position. And Candy has consistently positioned herself to receive numerous, numerous blessings. That's why her business has grown. She took some, we took some pictures because there were some cars out front, you know, Bentleys, Rolls Royces, nice cars out front. She took some pictures yesterday. And it's so funny because she and I both can tell the difference in the pictures that she took yesterday versus pictures she took years ago when she and I started going to conventions and conferences. It's a stark difference. The growth you can feel and you can hear it come out of you can hear it come out of her mouth and you can feel it from her. But man, you can see it. It is something about your swag, about your stance, about your walk, about your talk that turns out totally different when you're old. How did I just lose the one that I was doing? <laughs> it, it, it's it's totally different, y'all. When when you're improving so many different areas about you, it is a vibe. Okay, it radiates from you. And it's something that again, I can't even explain. So, you know, I, I'm I'm never gonna stop encouraging y'all to step out of your comfort zone and to get in these places. I, I like I said, I am on since outside opened back up, I'm on my what third conference in August. I will be traveling a bunch for a bunch of different things as well, bully weekend and all type of stuff. Um, but yeah, y'all, I'm not going to, um, overcook the grits. So that's all I wanted to say. That young man really, I, I've had a lot of impactful experiences this weekend, but that young man yesterday really inspired me. And I believe him. I believe that he's going to do great things. If he's keep, if he keeps doing what he's doing, hanging around the right people, making the sacrifices, plugging away. If he's only 20, what, 22, 23, I think he was. Um, and he's already here now today. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited for his future. I don't care about his past. You know, I'm so excited for his future. And David and Nietzsche talked to us about being future tellers, about not living in the past so that we could properly be present to design our future. Powerful conversation. Because so many of y'all live in the past. And that's, you know, it's like every day of your life is Groundhog Day. You don't want that to be your story. From, from the womb to the tomb, you just relive the same, you know, the same select number of traumatic events over and over again until you die. But so many people do that every single day. And that's why they are stuck. And, um, yes... The coach said the notes will never replace the experience, man. Let me tell you. <sighs> and I remember being um, broke and thinking they just want me to go to events so they can get rich off of me, which was funny because you're broke. <laughs> Kim, you don't have much to offer. So how is your lack of money making them money? They're not telling you to come to the events. But, you know, this event right here was first class, top notch. There are so many things to do. So many things to see. He spent way more money than what we paid. Way more money than what we paid. So yeah, the event is not, it's not, it's not for them. It's for you. But as long as you continue to think that somebody is trying to get you, or you can try, you continue to think that um, you know, you in some way, shape, or form are losing in order to help somebody else win. That, you know, money is leaving your pocket and fattening their... Oh, oh my gosh, you're going to continue to struggle. You're going to continue to struggle. I'm so much more free mentally now. Because I got my mind right regarding money. What I need to go to the next level. And people who are already in the places that I seemingly want to be. You know, I really had to watch jealousy, envy, um those counterproductive 
feelings and sentiments and emotions. And again, David E. Monitier talked about that because your feelings stimulate your, your action or your lack of action. And that's something that's very important to learn. Very important to learn. What we are doing at this conference is not motivation. It's not motivation. This is so much deeper than that. This is a, a spiritual thing. Do we talk about the Bible here? Yeah, he's quoting scripture because this stuff is spiritual. Everything that you want and desire. Seats are getting full. Okay, I got to go. Everything that you want and desire, you already have it in the spirit realm. But in order for you to manifest it, to bring it to, 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 to come in the, in the physical, you got to understand how that all works. And we weren't taught that. Um, oftentimes when we go to church, we just go to church like we're going to get, um, oh my gosh, we just go to church like we're going to get some kind of gold attendance star. That's not it, y'all. That's not it. So anyway, let me go. I will talk to y'all later. I did a good job. I got three more left. I might have to do these in the seat. All right. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. That's a little bit ghetto, but oh well. All right. Bye.